for a lot of people, video games is a way of life. And that means companies who do it really well transcend the gaming industry. They become a part of our life, pillars of who we are, cults even. And perhaps no company embodies this better than Nintendo. And normally Nintendo knocks it out of the park with their franchises. But I thought it'd be interesting today to take a look at their five worst franchises. Nintendo normally knocks it out of the park with their first party titles. Just look at Kid Icarus, how it revolutionized the gaming industry, spawning numerous sequels and giving us arguably the greatest video game character of all time, Pit. Ice Climbers was a juggernaut upon release. The game was considered so perfect, Nintendo decided a sequel could never live up to the hype of the original. So they have essentially retired the series. When Ice Climbers made it into Super Smash Bros., gamers around the world rejoiced. Sadly, or totally predictable, the ice climbing duos were too powerful, and as a result, they were subsequently removed from the series when Smash Bros. returned on the Wii with Smash Bros. Brawl. So sure, Nintendo established itself as a major player in the video game market off the backs of series like Duck Hunt and Wrecking Crew, but not all of their series were a hit. Just look at Metroid. Metroid was a disaster and almost bankrupt the company, but Nintendo didn't want to give up on one of the female pioneers of gaming. Still, they couldn't justify putting her on home consoles. Thus, her sequel was given life on the lowly handheld, the Nintendo Game Boy. Metroid was given a second shot on the Super Nintendo. Another flop. Often cited as the worst release for Nintendo up at that point. Samus would be relegated to handheld consoles two more times. Not to mention, after the absolute butchering that was Metroid as a first-person shooter, Metroid 4 was delayed and ultimately cancelled for the best, and not a single soul complained. It just goes to show you no matter how many times Nintendo releases an installment of a horrible franchise, true gamers do not forget past mistakes. So with that out of the way, let's look at Nintendo's 5 worst franchises. Coming in at number 5 is Animal Crossing. And when I was making this list, I really thought this would be number one. I mean, how could it not be? This is one of the most overrated franchises in all of gaming, let alone just Nintendo. I mean, what do you even do in this game? Seriously, you play as a kid whose sole purpose in life is to befriend animals. Doesn't that sound horrible? Like, oh no, Sally the Spider lost one of her eight shoes and needs you to find it. Other tasks consist of paying off your debt, which I mean, at least kids get exposed to how evil money is and how people will use it to manipulate them, so good job Nintendo capturing some realism there, I guess. Number four is Super Smash Brothers. We all knew this one was coming. Nintendo has long been loathed for repackaging and releasing the same games over and over and over with new paint and funny names. Is there a series that better embodies this than Super Smash Bros. Brawl? I feel like I've been playing the same game for 20 years. Like, I get it. The series definitely peaked on the Nintendo 64. Every game since has just felt like an ad campaign. Like, we get it. Fire Emblem, which honestly probably would have been number six on this list, couldn't sell worldwide. So they snuck in countless numbers of characters to try and brainwash us into wanting more Fire Emblem. Well, it still hasn't worked, and I'm just going to say it. Probably never will. However, they're getting really desperate. The next release of Smash Bros., slated for release on the Switch 2 this year, was announced to have a roster comprised entirely out of Fire Emblem characters. Have you lost all hope in the world yet? Number three is Pokemon. I'll make this one short. Give me a break. Do 30 year old men still think it's cute to film themselves opening Pokemon packs or playing Pokemon Go? No one cares if you found Mew under the truck. No one cares if you completed your Pokedex. <laughs> and trust me, no one cares if you had all of the original hollows from base set especially 
how many Charizards you owned when you were growing up. Get over it. Number two, Legend of Zelda. And what a waste of potential here. Zelda is one of those series that I keep trying to get into, man. Desperately, like, I see the potential here, guys. And it's just never worked. Sure, Zelda 1 was a total bust. If you're like me, you're surprised it even got a sequel. But here's the thing. Zelda 2? Phenomenal. Zelda 2 saved Nintendo. It helped restore faith with the general public. Despite this, Nintendo reverted back to the original formula. This contradicted all the good grace Zelda 2 built up. I'm sure you know where this is going. Then, there was the unspeakable sin. The point of no return. Ocarina of Time. Maybe the worst individual game ever released. The jump to 3D just... It just wasn't kind to the Zelda series. A lot of games went from 2D or, you know, 16-bit era and tried to make the jump. And you can think of some of the good ones like Bubsy, who did it perfectly. <sighs> Zelda 2 just tried to be ahead of its time, and the technology was not there. The jump to 3D, it, it wasn't kind one bit. The Z lock-on, it tried, it tried so hard to fix things, but arguably it just made it worse. Like, the thing just did not work. The time-traveling mechanic really just bogged down the story and made certain parts feel bloated. It was a total train wreck that the series just has not recovered from at all. Number one, Super Mario. And I guess we always knew it was going to be Super Mario. I mean, talk about a cash cow. At least other series like Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, and Madden, those games attempt to at least change things up and add to each new release. Not Mario. Nope, nope, nope. It's the same game 30 years later how many times do i need to run and jump and collect stars like isn't this getting old to anyone else am i the only one that sees how ridiculous this is and not to mention maybe the worst part they just keep slapping mario on anything and hoping it sells why do I need Mario playing golf, playing tennis, playing carts, and all the other countless side series? I can do all that in real life. Thank you. So without a doubt, easily, Mario is the worst video game mascot, worst video game franchise, worst anything. Like, it is so over. Played. So that's my list, guys. Uh, you know, I don't want to be overly critical of Nintendo here. I mean, you'd think after doing video games for the last 30 years plus, they would have figured this out. But, man, I mean, you start talking like, when was their last good franchise they've done? We, we mentioned Kid Icarus and Ice Climbers. I mean, that stuff was... That stuff was the NES era, you know? So, I, I don't want to rag on them too hard. We could keep going. I mean, we could talk about all the other losers like Donkey Kong, Kirby, or the failed experiment of Splatoon where they tried to make a new franchise and it just... It was just dead on arrival. But I really don't want to destroy them too hard. So, guys, let me know down below. What do you think is Nintendo's five worst franchises? Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.